Hey, what's up, tubers? This is the SHTF Hunter. Uh, today, uh, it's, I know it's been a little while since I made a video, but uh, I have, I come up with an interesting little project, and uh, we'll just start off with a disclaimer on this video first. I'm not advocating anybody to go out and poach deer, but this channel is about, you know, it's about survival, and it's for educational purposes only. The, uh, so first off, we'll talk about three reasons why people might poach. And uh, the first one, probably, you know, profit. You know, like like you see in Africa, a lot of poachers kill elephants for tusks, kill it for profit, big money. And so that's one reason. Second reason is, uh, is they're trying to kill a big trophy animal. Trophy animal put on the wall. And the third reason is maybe that where a lot of uh, a lot of survivalists or preppers may fall in this area is just trying to put meat on the table. And these, you know, these ain't necessarily, you know, out for a trophy buck or anything, but they're just trying to feed a family and may have a large family and you know, not a lot of money or whatever. So preppers, uh, you know, may fall in this category, survivalists and and the reason I'm doing the video is, you know, to sh teach you about another way of life, I guess you could say. But, uh, but we're we're kind of talking about one poacher in particular today. That's Charles Beatty. This is his book, Prince of Poachers, Part One. He has a Part Two coming out. This book um, covers most of his time from 1976. To, I think uh, around 1983, 84. Um, he eventually got caught in 98, but uh, it's, I think he said in 1999, it became a felony in Texas to poach deer or trophy buck. Charles Beatty was a taxidermist. And so he probably, he didn't, he didn't, he wasn't killing bucks for, for the meat. He was killing mostly I don't know if he was selling these these bucks, but where he's a taxidermist, you know, he could have sold these. I don't know if he's selling them out, and uh, and then he just killed them for trophies. He killed trophies, so uh, that may be the reason he done it. And so we so we went on. We talked about the re, the reasons a person might poach. Let's talk about certain rifles. Uh, what is a poacher's rifle? You know, it could it just it could be any gun, really. And uh, one of the, one of the most synonymous calibers I hear with uh, people who just gather meat is probably the twenty two Magnum. And I, I hear that cartridge more than anything when it comes to poachers. They love the twenty two Magnum, and the twenty two Magnum is capable of taking small game and capable of taking deer and it you know I'll, in the state of Virginia it's not legal to use a 22 caliber of any kind and uh, the 22 Magnum anything a 22 long rifle can do a 22 Magnum does better and you know you don't your shot don't have to be near as precise and it's just a little bit louder than 22 long rifle but and you know most poachers know if they if they build a suppress if they put a suppressor on their gun, it's a felony. It's a federal crime. <laughs> so a, a lot of them will, or go for the twenty two mag because it's fairly quiet. And you know, I know people in my area that actually use two twenty threes. And uh, but uh, anyway, uh, they're more like farmers, farmers slash hunters. A lot of times they carry a bolt action two twenty three in their trucks. Uh, they still don't make as much noise as like a your 308 30 out six parent case cartridges you know six five three more stuff like that so but and then there uh, we'll talk about what Charles Beatty used and Charles Beatty I think he talked about he used quite a few different guns at times uh, he even used a 35 Remington semi-auto uh, I remember him mentioning a 30 out six, and I think even maybe even a 22 250. I think the cartridge he really likes is probably a seven mil seven millimeter all eight, 
and uh but you can watch if you youtube search different uh his name charles Beatty or prince of poachers there's going to be some uh, podcasts i think hunter's advantage podcast will pop up where they're interviewing charles Beatty, and uh i you know this man he spent weeks out in the texas bush hunting i think sometimes by himself his longest hunt one time was like 27 days he ended up losing 26 pounds and uh he had to get he has to get water from windmills and you know he spent most of his summer uh studying topographical maps and uh it's you know the th things he had to do to survive you know the story about escape and invasion too uh the ranchers they sent up helicopters to look for him and uh cowboys you know cowboys on horseback and uh, you know if, if the cowboys had caught him they'd probably beat him up maybe even killed him left him laying you know he hunted on uh kennedy ranch down in texas which was four hundred thousand acres and I, I think he he loved the kennedy ranch more than anything it sounded like he poached deer off the king ranch too the king ranch was eight hundred thousand acres and he went he would go within seven, seven, ten miles deep in these ranches hunting. And, you know, ranches that big, it, it'd be very difficult to find anybody back then. The uh, technology changes. And uh, today you would have to, you know, it'd be very hard to poach today. You got game cameras. You got uh, thermal, thermal vision looking for, you know, they can use thermal vision to find you. Uh, night vision's cheap too these days. Uh, probably the, the the best way to find a poacher these days is probably thermal. But uh, so uh, let's talk about Charles Beatty's gun. And when when the game wardens caught him, I'm thinking he had a seven millimeter all day. But he had his gun. I think his gun might have been fully camouflaged. I've been I've been in contact with him trying to get, get him to do like a video of his gear, showing the gear he used for some of it, you know. And, uh, but anyway, so the, when the game wardens called him, they, they found, they found different cartridges in his pocket. And they, they were, uh, he, I think he called them downloads. He had some, it was almost subsonic. I, I guess they were subsonic. He said they didn't make a lot of noise over like two or three hundred yards. You could, you know, barely hear them or whatever. But, uh, so I had this old Remington 17. This is a 30 off 6. Uh, the 7, I think, yeah, no, no, it's not a 17, it's a 770. You know, uh, do not mistake this for being anywhere close to Remington 700 because it, it is not near as smooth as the Remington 700. Yeah, it's magazine fed. But, uh, but what I want to do with this, this is a very cheap rifle. It's something I, I've never done nothing with it. And I'm, I'm going to, I'm planning on camouflage, completely camouflaging this with scope. I literally have like $160 in this rifle. And the scope, I think I got about sixty dollars in a scope it's a old center point scope but uh i got the rifle with a gun a gun store is going out of business but uh one if you ever use a 770 you'll see why they're so cheap or they, they sell cheap <laughs> uh, so yeah i want this is my concept rifle and i may i'm going to, what i'm going to do is use a full power 30 six in it and then see, I got some 175 grain sub X bullets ordered. So I'm going to develop a 30 out six subsonic load and see where the two loads hit in comparison with each other. Now, um, Charles Beatty said, he was telling him on advantage, uh, Hunter's advantage that he, he knew by quarter aim, he would use his sub, I guess they were subsonic loads, <laughs> but he would use them uh, out to 200 yards. And if he needed to shoot further than that, he used a, a regular full power load. And so I thought it'd be interesting to uh, to make some subsonic loads for a 30 six and see how they fire, uh, how they 
where their point of aim is in comparison to full power 30-06 and uh, or anybody comments about 300 blackout <laughs> yes I know what a 300 blackout will do uh, it's still missing up a thousand feet per second velocity off of a 30 alt six, you know, if you use full power load. So, um, of course, all subsonic bullets are flying the same velocity. <laughs> but, uh, the weight of them, you know, I wasn't able to get uh, no 190 grain sub X's. Uh, I actually ordered some, but they said it wouldn't be here till October. But I did find some 175 grain on one of these sub X bullets, and they are on the way. And uh, so, anyway, uh, if you want to do, you know, do some research on escape, escape and evasion, and you know, surviving in the wilderness, Texas wilderness, check out Charles Beatty, Prince of Poachers. Uh, can't wait till part two comes out. This is the SHTF Hunter. I'm out.